There's healing in this sacrament. Amen. 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 There's healing in the atonement, the atonement. When we partake of the body and the blood of Jesus, we become one with him, one with his suffering. Just because he suffered doesn't mean we don't have to suffer. Because he says, in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So now let us partake of the broken body of our Lord. Please repeat after me. As I eat the body of the anointed one, as I eat the body of the anointed one, and drink the blood of the anointed one, and drink the blood of the anointed one, I dwell in the anointed one, I dwell in the anointed one, and the anointed one dwells in me, and the anointed one dwells in me. Let us partake of a shed blood. Everyone repeat after me. Christ above me. Christ above me. Christ below me. Christ below me. Christ to the right of me. Christ to the right of me. Christ to the left of me. Christ to the left of me. Christ in me. Christ in me. Christ in front of me. Christ in front of me. Christ behind me. Christ behind me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Repeat after me also. Let the full healing effect. Let the full healing effect of Christ's sacrifice of Christ's sacrifice be manifested in me be manifested in me right here right here right now right now thank you by virtue of Jesus's earthly incarnation by virtue of Jesus's earthly incarnation Public humiliation, public humiliation, severe mutilation, severe mutilation, brutal crucifixion, brutal crucifixion, miraculous resurrection, miraculous resurrection, glorious ascension, glorious ascension, and continual intercession, and continual intercession. I am completely empowered. I am completely empowered for total eternal victory. For total eternal victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Also, Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. He was bruised for my iniquities. The suffering necessary to secure my peace. The suffering necessary to incur my peace and well-being and well-being was laid upon him. Was laid upon him. And by his stripes and by his stripes I am delivered and healed. I am delivered and healed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. God. Delivered and healed. Amen. Yes. Amen. So receive that. Yes. 
receive you. Receive that. I come up here to pray for Ukraine and uh, Jerusalem. And I really didn't know what to pray. And so I, I Googled <coughs> Ukraine and <coughs> to see what, you know, it would say about praying for Ukraine. Some bullet points from there. I also got this book from um, this guy who is a Jew and it has some information in it about Jerusalem and Israel, how to pray for them. Beautiful. So I took some points out of that. And so I'm going to pray. If you guys could pray in the Holy Spirit, because yes. the word okay. tell us when we don't know what to pray, yes. Yes. to pray in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So if you could be praying in the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to uh, read this prayer I wrote for the prayer for Ukraine. And it says, Lord, I pray for all the refugees and citizens of Ukraine to find comfort, peace, and strength in God and share the source of their strength with others. I pray for wisdom, strength, and courage for the soldiers who are protecting Ukraine. Yes. I pray for the president and leaders of Ukraine to have wisdom and new strategies in the coming days. Yes. I pray that God will move in their hearts and guide their steps and plans. I pray for all the citizens and their families who have been displaced or separated, each from each other, to have safety and peace. I pray for those that seek and shelter to have wisdom and a clear mind, a clear mind in their decisions. And you alone knows the future. Yes. And Lord, we count on you because you are goodness and mercy and truth. And above all, you are love in Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I pray for Jerusalem. In Romans 10 and 1, it says, Paul the Apostle said, Brother and sisters, my heart's desire and prayer to God on behalf of the Jewish people is that they would be saved. Yes. yes. Lord, I pray yes. for the rule and reign of the Messiah to be established. Yes. Yes. I pray that the Jewish people can find peace in their hearts today yes. if they embrace their Messiah, Yeshua. And John yes. 14, 27 you. says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, yes. neither let it be afraid. Lord, I pray for the gospel of peace to come to the city and to the land of Jerusalem, to the hearts of the Jews and the Arabs alike. I, Lord, the only hope for long-term peace in Israel is for both Jews and Arabs to worship the one true God yes, through amen. Jesus, the Messiah. Lord, I pray for the absence of war and for safety and protection for all those who live in the land. And most, of, most important, I pray for the salvation of the Jewish people. In Jesus' yes. name, yes. I pray. Amen. 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 Good job. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's now time to continue our worship by giving our tithes and offerings. Yes. Amen. And Amen. you can't outgive God. There's no way. <laughs> so <laughs> He is the ultimate provider. He is an extravagant God. Yes. He's not just a so-so God. He's an extravagant God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And so we need to give him, to him extravagantly of our tithes, our offerings, our alms, our life, everything that our we worship. have, yes. our worship, yes. yes, everything that we have, because he is so good to us. Amen. Amen. Everybody has a testimony of God's goodness in their life. Yes. Absolutely. So if you want to come up here and bring your um, tithes and offerings, we have the fruit, fruit, bat first, oh, I can say it right, first fruit basket, <laughs> and uh, the vessel, and then there's also 
uh, the tool caddy for our change, then we're going to be putting that change in our improvement fund. Um, doesn't the paint look lovely? Yeah. But we yes. need to get our new carpeting. So yeah, just uh, coming along. So as you prepare, you can go ahead and bring it up. And Lord, as we could give in today's offering, we give thanks to you, the God of our salvation, to the God that has shown us unmerited mercy and gives us a new heart a new life, and a new destiny. Thank you, Lord, for all your gracious provisions. We are amazed at how you are watching over every area of our lives. We bring our offerings this day with a thankful heart. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Psalm 79, 13 says, So we, your people and sheep of your pasture, will give you thanks forever. We will show forth your praise to all generations. And Psalm 106, 1 says, Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Forever. Forever and Amen. ever and ever and ever. <laughs> He's a good, oops, ooh, there it went. He's a good God. Okay. So if you want to bring your um, offerings up, then we'll go ahead and pray over them. And we'll be praying over those that are here and those that have been given um, over Givelify or however you've chosen to give them. We have them all. Um, people buy. Yes. Lord, we just wave these to you, Lord God. Yes. We just wave them to you. The ones I have in my hand and the ones that are online, Lord, just bless Thank them. You. Bless Any them over and above here? that they could ever mm -hmm. imagine. Lord, come into their lives in new and precious ways. Just bless not only their finances, but their relationships, their lives. And most of all, we ask you to bless their relationship with you and draw them ever closer. Bring checks in the mail, bring unexpected uh, gifts that can only come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yes. Um, I have the books up here for... Um, this Presence Evangelism that will be starting this week. So if you haven't gotten one yet, you can come up and find me and get one. They'll be $11, but um, you can pay next week if you choose. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, I am so excited about starting this um, new series with you. So, was it last month or a few weeks ago, we had finished up our last series written by Apostle Robert Flowers from Missouri, um, and it was about the, the kingdom tools, the tools for effective kingdom evangelism. But, but I'm really excited to get into this one. This is present evangelism. And... From everything that God's been showing to me, speaking to me, showing me in, in dreams, and even in some visions we've had, the stage is set. God is getting ready to release his spirit upon the earth. Amen. And so I, I've been crying out since, I don't know, for, for a long time now, 
Lord, keep showing us what do we need to do to prepare. And so we began the first series where God is saying, we need to look at the scriptures. We need to know how, because not everybody uh, feels like they're called to be an evangelist. Um, there is the office of the evangelist with the apostle, prophet, pastor, and teacher. But we're not all called to that, but we're all called to do the work of the evangelist like Jesus did. And like his disciples did, sharing the good news about what he's done in our lives. Amen? Amen. So we learned about how to, um, like, how not to be rude, how to have good manners when we're doing that, and, and about the evangelistic styles. Um, but now we're going to begin to get in to the presence of evangelism is where I really believe that that we're coming into. I would almost call it like, it's it's um, almost like prophetic evangelism. There's, there's a term called prophetic evangelism. Um, and this is, they kind of overlap. So does everybody have a book that, that needs a book? Cheryl's got some up here in the box. If you need one, hold up your hand real quick or just pop up, up to here and get one from Cheryl or two or whatever you need. They're just $11, but if that causes a hardship for anybody, we, we will figure that out. So please don't not take one because you don't have the funds for it. I can't read, so I don't That's okay. That's good, Patrick. I'll do my best just to, to read it clearly, okay? Thank you. Okay. I appreciate that. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Apostle Leon did, um, if you look into your book, actually, if y'all have a pen, which would be great if y'all had a pen with you every week. If you don't, um, or your pen runs out of ink, Pastor Tom is hogging the little pen container back there on top of his sound booth. So, you're all welcome to go back and get one if you need one. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> For me to behave myself. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. You, you're not hugging all the pens. Okay. Oh no, don't start me on the laughter again. Oh my gosh, God did that to me a couple weeks ago. I couldn't stop laughing. Um, that was funny. <laughs> so, what I'd like you to do with that pen I just uh, made a whole big dissertation about, write your name in the book. <laughs> just on the, like the inside cover here. So that if anybody leaves their book, we're going to know who it belongs to. And so right, just right up here in the inside cover. Don't put it in the middle where I can't find it. Just right up here in the inside cover would be lovely. Yes. And as you're doing that, um, there's a dedication. And then there's um, a word here from Apostle Leon that endorses the book, the, the Presence Evangelism Manual. He says that it's geared to help us launch into the deep and become fishers of men, and to become bolder and more confident. And I, I like that. I think that's great. And then he also cites the scripture, John 4, verse 35. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. You know, it's funny. Whenever we've gone down to uh, Santa Rosa Beach, down to... <laughs> I think Cheryl's been with me, and you, I don't know if it happened when you and I went down, but it has when Pastor Tom and I, the family, as you're going down, is it through Alabama, honey, when, we, when we're going down to Destin, Florida, and there's these cotton fields, and when we go down for IGAP, which is the, gathering, the gathering of apostles and prophets, the cotton is all white. These fields look totally white, and we start declaring the fields are white for harvest. So, um, then Bishop Hammond does a foreword for the beginning of the book. So you can go back and look at these during the week, finish reading Apostle Leon's and then, and then Bishop's. But I want to highlight um, a part here. Uh, Bishop Hammond says that Apostle Robert reveals what is involved when God's presence is in us and working through us. By gaining the truths that are found within this book, we will all gain the knowledge 
and faith to appropriate the presence of Jesus Christ. I'm in the second paragraph there. And then um, when you have his manifest presence, all things are possible. You will become a great ambassador for Christ Jesus when you practice present evangelism. And then he, he releases a blessing over, over Apostle Robert. Um, before we start this series, I just want to pray over each one of us that we can begin to catch the vision of the love of the Father for each one of us and that we would begin to have personal encounters with God ourselves, each one. I believe it's time. And I love when Pastor Tom was playing that we have the fire locked up in our bones. I'm believing for a new deposit, for an anointing of fire within us. But that fire is going to be, be couple. I just see like the, like the blue color of the flame is, is the love of God. We got the fire and the love, not a condemning fire, but but the fire of God within us. And when that member in the song says, "I just gotta let it out, gotta let that fire out," I believe that you're gonna have encounters with people where the presence of God is there, and you start speaking, and you're gonna have to go back and look and at what you just said because it's just gonna come out. Amen. 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 Yes. So on page. Um, it's a Roman numeral nine. We have the introduction. Do you all see where the introduction is? Mm -hmm. I want to go over some parts of this real, real quick. I was thinking originally we might do this in two weeks, but the Lord was speaking to me a little louder yesterday. And I think we're just going to take it easy and just go with how the Holy Spirit goes. I'm not going to lock it into a time. It, we could be three weeks, but I don't want to lock it into a time schedule. I feel like um, sometimes when I get up here and I do something like this, like I did with the last one, then God starts inserting a lot of other things that I have no idea I'm going to say. And so what I want to do is if we go, I don't want to go so long that you guys are going to, like I don't want to do us another chapter if we just still need to absorb the first one. Okay? So we're just going to, I don't know where we're going to end up at the end here, but we're just going to let the Holy Spirit direct us. Amen? Amen. So I think the introduction is important because um, I love some of the things that Apostle Robert says here because this is the purpose of what we're doing. So I want us to take this in. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> the purpose of presence evangelism is to activate you into a new glory of God for kingdom penetration, kingdom influence, kingdom reformation, and kingdom transformation. Praise the Lord. Amen. And this is the stage is set. This is what we are getting ready to come into is kingdom reformation. God is going to reform things. God is transforming us. We're going to be his transformer units. Okay. And then he's going to release us on the rest of the world. Amen. Amen. However, what I'm saying is some of the world is going to be coming to you. Amen. It's just like when we're glowing in the dark, when your, your light is shining, in this dark world, people are going to want to come to where the light is. Yes, amen. Can I just hang out with you for a few minutes? Yeah. Okay, you're going to have encounters like that. There's been some that have, have happened over the years, but I believe that is going to increase. Yes. Where people are just going to see that you're lit up with the love of God. Amen. amen. So I'm still in the first paragraph here. Um, second sentence down. Presence evangelism is the result of the birthing from the third day movement, uh, which is another book that he's written. Um, and so that's another terminology for the, for the final reformation or the great awakening that already began in 2007 um, or 2008. So he says, we are still in the first stages where apostles and prophets are <coughs> preaching and writing God's revelation so that those who hear and read will be activated in present truth and begin demonstrating God's word. So, like myself, God still has me writing. We're the first fruit, the book on the first fruits, that's a movement in itself about putting 
God first, living by the, the principles of first in the kingdom of God. So I believe there's others too. I believe God is getting ready to release things from every direction. So it's an exciting time that we're in. And then um, about the fourth paragraph down, presence evangelism is now being birthed by the Holy Spirit to release another great awakening. Amen. Anybody agree with that? Yes. Okay. Amen. God wants the church to know Jesus Christ in his fullness. As Jesus becomes unveiled in his fullness, and as we walk through the door, Jesus into the room, the Father will be made known and revealed in a new way to the body of Christ. The Gospel of John says, 17 in chapter 17, verse 3, and this is eternal life, that, that they may know you, God the Father, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent. Each member of the Godhead provides something different for the effectiveness and success of the body of Christ as one in agreement. So we're going to be talking about some of the differences with that, of what each member of the Godhead brings. There's a direct correlation with the revelation of Father God concerning the final reformation and awakening being birthed and established in the earth. With presence evangelism, the passion God has for the whole world and the nations of the earth becomes manifested. So God's passion will become manifested through presence evangelism. The idea of sharing the message of Jesus Christ in this move of God depends heavily upon the Holy Spirit, as opposed to evangelistic formulas, tracks, or rote conversation. I have felt this for a while, that God is going to be using it in different ways than he's ever done before. And what's going to happen is there are going to be these encounters of the presence of God with you, with somebody else. Or somebody's else. Okay? And it's going to be God's presence that they cannot deny. And sometimes I believe that is going to happen through prophetic words where you're just going to, um, you know, have a word just kind of bust out of you. I mean, Cheryl was sure before she was at a restaurant and it seemed like a simple thing. That, that person was a believer, but there's going to be times where it's going to be unbelievers. And what I hear the Lord saying is they're not going to know what hit them. Because you're going to look pretty harmless to them, but all of a sudden God's presence yeah. is going to manifest. Yeah. Yeah. There's sometimes, you know, God is having me to say something to somebody that right. they know I can't know, that only God knows it. Amen. And that makes an impression because there's people that feel that God doesn't love them, either what they've taught or how they've misunderstood the Lord. But God wants to reveal himself and his love through you. Are, are you all willing to do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Now, sometimes it means not being shy. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it means, and don't not worrying about what you think somebody's going to think about you. Yeah, be And I'll tell you, I have noticed the enemy just try to put a little extra pressure to intimidate you, yeah, saying really. things, oh, they're going to, you know. And you have to realize that you may hear the enemy's voice trying to intimidate you not to say something. But then other times I know God just like has it come out. And you do, it's not even a choice. It just, it's there before you know it. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah, I really okay. Do. I doubled it. Yeah. Good. Miriam <laughs> double does. Okay. And Jennifer triple does. Who, who triple does? Jennifer. Jennifer. Okay. Very good. Very good. Are y'all in it with them there? I can't, I can't go to each one. I won't be here all day. So we're on uh, Roman numeral X, or ten, page 10 here in the introduction. And right now, your pages all correspond with mine. They didn't before, but they do right now. So, <laughs> so this last part here um, of the introduction. In presence of evangelism, God's presence and power will invade certain cities, 
regions, and nations to establish the final reformation and third awakening. <clears throat> Just to remind you all, there are words over the state of Indiana that we are a first strike state. So when God is considering regions and areas and cities, just so you know, Indianapolis is the capital city of Indiana. A lot of prayer has gone up over the state and over this city. Amen. And I believe that prophetic word that God can strike here first is very relevant. Yes. Okay, so we need to be prepared. We need to be humble. We need to be having that relationship with the Lord. And yes, go ahead, Cheryl. Your cousin that got saved on the streets, he was the first fruit. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'll, sh I'll share that real quick when we do that. Okay. Um, so with, um, I can't remember the name of the prayer group. Um, oh, Indiana Prayer. Yeah, there's an Indiana State Prayer Group that, that we would have meetings here, and a, a lot of the, um, some of the, the feasts of the Lord we would set would celebrate here. Anyway, we were downtown, Indianapolis, on the circle, and praying down there in the streets. Was it even May? I can't remember when it, yeah, it, it was, seemed to me that it was, it was May. Anyway, um, so, and it was multiple times we've been down there praying. There was another time, um, some Chinese delegates came in. And with Lisa McFarland, and we prayed down there. So there's lots of times when we've gone down there and prayed with several things that God had given us. And um, so one day I had a dream about a cousin of mine back in San Diego. And I can't remember the details of the dream. So on my dad's side, I have like uh, 20 cousins. With my brother and I, it's like 22 of us. And so one of these cousins is in the dream, and I was telling Pastor Tom, and sometimes with dreams, God will kind of unction you to reach out to them. Well, I didn't know how to reach out to him. Anyway, Pastor Tom goes on the internet, finds out that he was part of the water authority in San Diego, and there was a convention here in Indianapolis that he attended, and his phone number was on there, his work phone number. Wow. So... I, I'm like, hmm, this is, God's like really set me up right here, right? So <laughs> I reach out to him and call him at work, and he says, oh, my gosh, what's my cousin? I'm not going to say what my nickname is. Uh, what would my cousin be doing calling me, you know? Uh, we haven't talked in many years. Uh, we were a little bit closer than he was in the younger group of cousins where, where I was. And so um, he had said, yes, he was here in Indianapolis, and he said the conference he was at had an acronym, the letters of it meant something about like drinking constantly. It was like a big party thing with a lot of drinking. And so he said one night he was, he was down, I think near the circle, he was down in Indianapolis downtown walking on the streets and all of a sudden he had an encounter with God by himself and God reached out and said like, like he was like, you got to get a hold of yourself. Like you've got to stop this drinking. <laughs> he stopped. God like uh, anointed. He just stopped. And that there's family issues with that, with all that kind of behavior, you know, on our side. Um, and he said he had, he had stopped right then that that visit to Indianapolis to change his life. He went back delivered. Amen. Wow. Yes. Hallelujah. And I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, this is what we have prayed about. This is what we prayed for. So like Cheryl was saying, it was kind of like the first fruit, like God, God gave us confirmation and said, yeah, I can do that. But I need your prayers to go before me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you see how I'm saying? I think things are right. Things are ready. And I think God has a way of preparing people's hearts that you don't know. So if God is unctioning you to move, you have to trust that he's already prepared their heart. And that can be with questions, with, you know, with calling out to him, you know, and, and we, we may not know that. So we need to trust when it's time to move. So anyway, I had this wonderful conversation with my cousin. Um, he had joined a Christian church, loved it. And I said, because um, we, 
our whole family, we were never taught to tithe or, or anything like that. And I asked him, I said, are you tithing? And he said, I'm at 8%. I'm almost to 10%. I said, oh, that's great. So, so anyway, it was really interesting. I guess he had a, a lot of growth and was really, really living for the Lord. So that encouraged my heart. Yeah. So as we pray for our cities, we want to see the angels being released, ministering to people, Holy Spirit, Amen. ministering to people Amen. on the streets. You know, this is the month of May. Did anybody know that? <laughs> Did y'all know there's lots of people coming into the city yes, this yes. weekend and weekends coming? So, Lord God, we pray yeah. that you will continue to do more of that. That all of these visitors, that they will go, that your spirit will meet them. Yes, that your yes. workers like us will be released into the harvest. That you'll give us people to minister to. To minister life, healing, yes. salvation. Lord God, we pray that every visitor that comes into our cities, into, into our airports, will leave change. Yes, Lord. Will go back home transformed and renewed because they've had an encounter with you. Lord. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So yeah, we're not even into lesson one yet. So <laughs> <laughs> let me. Uh, I'm going to continue here with what Apostle Robert was saying. He says the culture and the values of the kingdom, and the dominion, and the quote greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to people of the saints, believers of the Most High. And that's in Daniel 7, 27. This means that God's presence will penetrate every aspect of society on earth, bringing transformation, separating the sheep and the goat nations, and making preparation for the return of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So now let's go to lesson one, knowing Jesus in his fullness. We live in a world where many people may have a form of religion, but have no relationship or understanding of the true nature of Jesus Christ. Did, did you guys get books? Okay. Do we have a couple more there? Mm-hmm. Why don't you just spread those out back there, and then when you're done, just, just pop them back in case anybody else wanted them, but at least they can have a couple to look at there. So this lesson seeks to highlight the value and the importance of knowing and encountering the fullness of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen? When we have a true and authentic relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we are able to walk fully in our God-given authority and power. I'm on page one. And we are able to serve as effective witnesses for Jesus Christ. So a few things to consider as we read this lesson. In what ways can you help the lost and unsaved know Jesus Christ in his fullness? So that would be one thing to think about. The first thing that comes to me is just praying for those that I know need to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That's one thing that comes to me, but I want you to continue to ponder that for yourself as well. And then second, the second bullet point, what are some hindrances or obstacles that prevent people from knowing Jesus Christ? So you can... Look at this during the week. Write down thoughts that you have on these questions. Make this, this book, this student manual, make it personal for you. And if God gives you any revelations, I always like to put like personal revelation. I underline it and then write whatever I feel that the Lord is showing me. Hang on just a second. Let me do adjust things here. Our memory verse, it's in the gray shaded box. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeketh not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. John 14, 17. 
So this week, go back and look at the memory verses that we've covered and just go over those and internalize those. And the, now this is Genesis 1-2. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then we should be, is everybody on page two? Okay. Get a little warm up here. Give me just a second. <laughs> In the beginning, there was no shape to the earth. There was no sun, moon, or stars. The gross darkness, there was gross darkness that no man has ever seen before. And there was total chaos. The earth and the heavens were like one big frozen ball of ice. The Holy Spirit began to restore, form, shape, and replenish the earth. The manifestation of the Godhead on earth consisted of the Holy Spirit. This is Genesis 1 and 2, and then Job 33 and verse 4. Building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God hath made me. Can you all say that? The Spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Breath, breath of, of the Almighty, Almighty has given me life. life. And that's Job 33, 4. And it states that the Spirit of God has made us, and the breath of Almighty God is what gives us life. There was a dream that I had that was really, uh, gosh, um, you know how some dreams are like, just in your memory and your spirit, that they're so um, prolific or sometimes they're colorful or they just kind of stand out. Well, there was one where there was a young woman with me and I was teaching her about the breath of God, about the power and the anointing of the breath of God. And it was in the breath of God is also his glory. So if he's breathing on, he is the glory. He's breathing in us. He's brought. He's breathed on us to bring us to life. There's glory in us. Amen? Amen. There, there's more that God has with that. I, I can't go into all of it now, but um, sometimes when you, if you're just having a difficult time or whatever you're going through, you can just say, Lord, breathe on me. Breath of God, flow through me. Amen. Sometimes if you just take that moment to pray that, God can kind of reset you when you invite him in. Amen. And we believe Holy Spirit already lives in us. But when you're, when you're asking for his breath, it's like you're asking for an encounter face to face. Amen. The first manifestation to our hearts is the Holy Spirit. We must begin building our relationship with him. And we can look at 2 Corinthians 13, 14, and 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Just as the Holy Spirit was first to manifest on the earth, it should be a priority that we build a relationship with him. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And Paul said that in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Can we say fellowship of the Holy Spirit? Fellowship of the Holy Spirit. With you all. With you all. Yes. So that's something we need to have that fellowship with Holy Spirit. Do you think once a week would probably be enough? No. Every, every day, every, every, every minute. minute, maybe every minute. So maybe we could start, you know, there's, there's different discussions on, does the day begin at night when the sun goes down? Cause when God created the world, it's like, that was the beginning. So 
Do we begin at night or do we begin in the morning? At some point, we need to say, start each day, whether it's at night or in that morning, and then continue with him. Mm -hmm. If we don't do that at some established point, in a, within every 24-hour cycle, I believe each day is a new day. We need to make sure that we're with him in that new day each day. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, it's every morning when I wake up. I try to have time with him, dedicate that time with him. I like to give him the first fruits of my day. Yes. Now, I can do that the night before as well, whenever I can consistently do that. But I notice my days are more powerful and more solutions come and more things work out when I started out with him. If there's times that I wake up late and I don't have that time with him, which I don't think, anyway, things just malfunction. Is that a good way to put it? Do you all notice that yes. sometimes? Yeah. So I encourage you to just have that time with him. And then it doesn't mean ignore him the rest of the day, but it's easier to continue once you start. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. So the last bullet point here on point two, the Holy Spirit is with us. First, to convict us of sin and convince us of Christ's righteousness. Um, one, one testimony I can give you of how the Holy Spirit um, con convicted me or convicted us is that um, we came out of a church that really didn't teach about tithing. We didn't really know about tithing. Or I remember, you know, my parents were putting like, five dollars in the basket or we'd have a little dollar or some quarters and so i didn't really know the biblical aspect that god tells us to tithe so at one point um pastor tom and the holy spirit started to convict us and show us that we needed to start tithing he like illuminated it to us and used the word of god to show us and then we realized and by convicted i don't mean he was hitting us over the head but he opened our eyes and gave us awareness and then kind of convicted us that, that this was the right way to have a relationship with him. So we began tithing then. It was after that that then God gave me the revelation about the first fruits and about giving first fruits. And it was interesting. He had to kind of get me on track with tithing first and then and let me understand that and then show me the next thing. Can you imagine if I had been resistant? then I wouldn't have known or been experiencing all of the good things and more of him than I've experienced. So um, that's an example of how Holy Spirit brings us under conviction and it's just to get us on the right path and he knows the blessings that are in store after that. The Holy Spirit has never tried to convict us to do something wrong. It's always to just get on path with God's righteousness. And I'm just hearing the Lord say, it's also, I hear it's a protective move. That when God tries to bring us into righteousness, it's to protect us from the not good things that are coupled with, with what we're maybe doing that we need to change our behavior on. Amen. Yes. Um, next point is uh, the, the John description of Holy Spirit. So in this scripture of John 16, Jesus says to his disciples, but I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him. I will send the Holy Spirit to you to be in close fellowship with you. Amen. So the reason the Holy Spirit comes is to be in close fellowship with us. You can talk to him while you're folding the clothes, while you're cutting your vegetables, while you're washing your car. Okay? He's with you all the time. I, I love uh, he is your comforter, your helper. He's your advocate, the one who fights for you. Your intercessor, your counselor, you don't know which way to go. Start praying in the spirit and ask him 
to impress an answer to you. He's the only one to impress the Lord. Amen. Yes, he is. So you're never alone. He's always with you. He's your strengthener and your standby. Amen. So I hope that sharing this today helps remind us that we need to cultivate that relationship with Holy Spirit, that he is constantly with us. And we can ask him for that wisdom, ask him for that counsel. Now, it may not come in the next two seconds, but I guarantee you, God hears your request. Holy Spirit, out. and then sometimes the answers I get from Holy Spirit is a question that I need to ask to the Father. Okay? And it may not be right away. It may be sometimes I know things within 24 hours or 48 hours. Like, I may be reading the scriptures or studying something, and I'm like, Lord, I know there's something here. What what is it? There's something I know there's something here. And I'll ask him, and it'll be sometimes 24, 48 hours. It's like sometimes when I wake up in the morning or just at any time. And it's almost like he takes his yellow highlighter and highlights it in my <laughs> spirit. And then I know, and then it's like the answer comes with it. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I got it. I got it. So if you ever ask me something, I said, well, I've got to pray about that, or I need to sleep on that. I'm not putting you off. I'm serious. I have to pray about it. I have to let let it simmer with the Lord. Just like with major purchases. Don't go out buying a new car. Don't go out doing something spontaneously. I know it feels good in the moment, but always sleep on it. Refinancing any major decisions. Sleep on it. Let God and ask God. Say, God, I need you to illuminate. Give me a, a sense of peace about this or give me. A warning about it that I don't have peace and I know not to endeavor into this partnership, this transaction, whatever it is. Do, do all of you know what I mean? Have you felt that when you felt like a, a warning in your spirit? It just it's like you don't have a peace, but you also don't know why, though. Sometimes you have that, but you don't know why. God does not have to justify himself on these things, he wants to see if you're going to walk in faith. That's what our relationship is with. It's faith. It means I don't know all the details and I'm going to trust you, Lord, but I feel like you're telling me this, so I'm going to walk that way. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yet sometimes if when we are too much into logic or the intellect, we want to justify, we want to know why we're doing something before we do it. And that's not how... Our relationship with God works. Anybody had experiences that agrees with that? Yes. Yeah. But you know, afterwards, I tell you, God will, He does. He confirms it and He shows you. But then I also believe, and I'll have to tell you when I get to heaven, but I believe, I'm believing like I'm going to see some of these things, like, like on a movie, a video or something, where I believe there's other things we don't know why. I believe God may show us like why we we had to do something, but I believe there's things that we don't even know. Times that He protected us, and and things that would probably scare us if we knew what was out what was out there or around us. Amen. So even if I know a tidbit, I know I think there's like ten more reasons. God is multifaceted. He's in front of us fighting our battles. Yes, He is. He's in front of us fighting our battles. Amen. Okay, we're going to be at the top of page three here. We just read John 16, 7 and 8 on page two, and now we're at the top of page three. John 16, 8 tells us that the Holy Spirit's job is to convict people about the guilt of sin and the need for a Savior. And that's what I think that God prepares people's hearts. Well, they'll be knowing that that the path that they're on is not the right path. Just like my cousin walking in the streets of downtown Indianapolis. All of a sudden, he was convicted that this lifestyle for him, that probably the whole family had, had, had been walking in, it wasn't for him anymore. And he felt so convicted, he made a lifestyle change right then. And I believe probably the anointing of God gave him that strength to walk away from yes, from the drinking, from what he was dealing with right then. 
And um, I don't know if he already had salvation or not, but the Holy Spirit will help us when we're trying to work with somebody. And God will, God knows right when their heart is prepared where they're convicted of the sin or they're convicted enough to know that they need a savior. And sometimes that need for a savior is that desire for peace in their life. Amen. Next bullet point. Once we once we respond to the Holy Spirit's convicting power and repent, he gives us access to Jesus and the Father. The Holy Spirit serves as the entryway. I underlined that one. I thought that was good. The Holy Spirit serves as the entryway. After being given access to Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, we now receive another power called the power of authority. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about this power of authority that comes from Jesus. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about a different kind of power that comes from Holy Spirit. Okay? So the authority that comes from Jesus Christ... We're going to look at this next scripture. But as many as received him, Jesus, to them he gave power. So to as many as have received him, have you received him? Yes. yes. To those who received him, he's given you power. power. And this is the exousia power. Now I underline this. Exousia is the power of authority. Government, jurisdiction, law, or right to act like God by means of relationship. I love that. The right to act like God by means of relationship, meaning to become sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. So to believe in his name, according to John 1.12, is to become sons of God. Then we have this exousia authority um, that's linked with the right to act like God because we're in relationship with him. Now, we can't be a son then if we, just, if we believe on Jesus and then we ignore him after that. We need to continue that relationship with him and the Father. So the next bullet point under... John 1 is exousia power works on the inside of the believer, the one who believes in Jesus, to bring them into full maturity of their sonship. So the exousia power works on the inside of us as believers to bring us into maturity of our sonship. How many of you have seen, have seen some growth of maturity since you first became a believer? Amen. Oh, good. Excellent. That's very good. You can all stay. <laughs> Galatians 4 1. Well, we don't want we don't want any ones that are, you know, throwing immature and throwing fits in the corner because they're not being seen or they're not getting what they want, or right? M mature sons don't throw fits like babies do, right? Right. And since we're believing we need to keep maturing and increasing in maturity. Okay, Galatians 4 1 says that, that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from the servant, though he be the Lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the appointed time of the Father. So, this again speaks of a time of full maturity. So, let me give you an example of this. Let's say and, and these things have happened where the father, the, the king, the reigning king of a kingdom dies. The heir that's left is like six or eight years old. Not mature, not old enough to rule. So what do they do? They have tutors, they have governors, they have people raising that son up in maturity until he is old enough to be mature for the responsibility of ruling and reigning in the kingdom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Y'all remember hearing stories about that where they were they were too young. So, so he says it says here 
that an heir, even though this child is an heir, he's not much different than a servant because he doesn't have any power right now. He doesn't have any governing or uh, reigning authority. So does it make sense that if we're not maturing, if we're still in, an, in a young six or eight year old spiritual life, we need to be maturing to rule and reign here on earth as sons and daughters of the most high God. Um, and then Apostle Robert says, but at the moment of salvation, the believer receives this governmental authority, but we need to keep growing in maturity to be able to use it. Yes. Scripture references are, uh, I'm sorry, scripture references on growing from babes to disciples. And I think the next one is from servants to sons of God in governmental authority. The next scripture is Isaiah 9, 6. Unto us a child is born and a son is given. So here, again, we see this process of maturity. And the government shall be on his shoulders, Isaiah 9, 6. Then it says, read Isaiah 9, 8. Actually, just take your pen and cross out verse 8. It's supposed to be verse 7, which speaks of increase of his government. So what's the Is that seven eight? Uh nine seven. Thank nine, you, David, seven, for clear. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah nine verse seven. Of the increase of his government and peace. There will be no end. Well, actually, you know what? Let me go ahead and read verse 6 to you as well. I'll read 6 down through 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. So that was Jesus being born and then him growing up to be a son, growing in maturity. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Of the increase of his government and peace, of the increase, there will be no end to the increase, okay? Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice, from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Amen. So the moment you are born again, you receive the power of authority over death, demons, and sickness. And you can see this in Luke 9, 1 and 2, and then chapter 10, verses 1 through 2, and also 19. Let's go ahead and read. Luke 19. Oh, I'm sorry. It's Luke 9, right? Yes, Luke, Luke 9. Oh, okay. Then he called the 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Okay, that was it. So he called together his 12 disciples and he gave him, that he gave them the power and the authority to cast out demons and to heal the diseases. So, I want to take time to explain this next part, okay? Um, in Acts 1.8, it tells us about the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. So I thought it was in the next chapter. It's actually right now where, so we saw that Jesus gave them the Zeusia power, okay, of authority. But now in Acts 1.8, it tells us about the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit. 
not the power of the exousia authority, okay? So there's a difference here. It says that they were able to have a, a separate experience operating in the exousia first with Jesus for three and a half years. Afterwards, experiencing the dunamis power. It says, but you shall receive power dunamis, meaning the ability for miracle working power explosive. Okay? After the Holy Spirit has come to you, come upon you, and then you shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So the purpose of the dunamis power was to be witnesses of Jesus. So let me just recap a few thoughts here. So Jesus gave his disciples the exousia power, the authority, and with that they were able to do healing of diseases and to cast out demons. And then, as we read earlier, Jesus said, hey, I got to go. But I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And if I don't go, you're not going to have this power that you're going to need to survive and go on, okay, and to do the work I've called you to do. So we're talking about two different types of power, all right? So, so they had the exousia power with Jesus for during their discipleship, learning about the authority. But then he says, you will receive this dunamis power. The dunamis power is ability for explosive miracle working power, okay, which Jesus was operating under, but they were not yet, okay. So, so does this make sense? So the power of the Holy Spirit was going to bring them, so was so that they could be witnesses. And what do you think happens when these disciples that now have this power of the Holy Spirit? <coughs> They're doing signs, wonders, and miracles. Now what do you think is going to happen from that, from this dunamis power? People are going to see it. People are, It's a testimony that Jesus died and arose because they're doing it in Jesus' name. So it's these kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles of the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit in you that is going to be a witness to other people that Jesus lives in you and that God cares about that. And then that's when we need to then bring them into the kingdom and give them the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of their lives. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes. So when a believer comes into contact with each person of the Godhead, they're going to receive power. So I had never seen that before. I thought that was interesting. How the power increased with the Holy Spirit once Jesus, but he knew he had to go so that the Holy Spirit could come. So then, this is the day that the Holy Spirit poured out his power and clothed them with it, activating them in the nine gifts. And that's Acts 2, verses 1 through 4, also Psalm 104, 4, and Hebrews 1, 7. So we're talking about the day of Pentecost is when that happened. In Acts 2. Now, right now, we a few uh, a while back we celebrated Resurrection Sunday and, and Jesus' death and the Passover. Pentecost, we're right now in this season approaching Pentecost. Pentecost is June 5th, coming up in just a couple of weeks. So yay. Yay, yes. So I believe we're right where we need to be for preparing. Pentecost preparing for how studying scriptures on how to be the best witnesses we can for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because if we parallel right now that, you know, this was one of the, um, as Pe when Pentecost came, that's when they were adding to the church daily after the first 3,000 were brought into the church. And I believe that God works, that he does parallel the times yes. that that we are in a significant season this is a significant season of the lord mm -hmm. if we look back to the azusa street revival which we were um, talking about and studying a, f a few months ago there was um, a huge the huge earthquake in san francisco 
was three days after Easter Sunday. And that's when, um, and then God was working down on Azusa Street in LA, but the earthquake up there, you know, really got everybody's attention. And then LA is having all of these tremors, then they're having more earthquakes down there. And it was getting everybody stirred up. God was getting their attention. And then the move of God for that move at Azusa Street increased even after Passover, uh, after Pentecost. So we're in a significant season. So, Lord, we just ask you to continue to move, Lord. So we're going to continue the next bullet points here and finish up this lesson. As referenced in the aforementioned scriptures, the disciples are moving in Exusia. I'm, I'm sorry, not Exusia, in explosive power and gifts. We're talking about Pentecost in Acts 2. The disciples are moving in explosive power with gifts, causing the Exusia power, the governmental authority, to explode everywhere where they went. So Jesus gave them the power, the anointing of authority, and Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, let me just amplify this a bit. <laughs> Take it up a notch. Take it, yeah, take, take it up a whole bunch of notches. <laughs> and what did Jesus say? That, that they would do miracles even that he hadn't done. So it is stated in Acts 17, 6, that the disciples turned the world upside down. They did this by having separate experiences with the Godhead and receiving a different type of power from each. Regarding the angels, he says, it says, quote from Hebrews 1, 7, he sends his angels like the winds, his servants like flames of fire. And, and there's, a whole much, there's a whole lot more on this verse that I want to teach you. I think I'm going to do a whole other lesson just on the angels of what I think God, things that God is showing me with that. So I think that we might have a uh, series on angels after we finish this one. I don't know. We'll just let the Lord show us. But the Holy Spirit and his power and armies of angels showed up on the day of Pentecost and permeated their spirit, soul, and bodies. Acts 2 and also Psalm 104 and again Hebrews 1 through 1 verse 7. I believe that, see, God's angels are like flaming ministers of fire. As we're being prepared, these angels are also being released into the harvest, into our communities and cities yeah. to, bring, to bring revival. It's going to be Holy Spirit and the angel armies and us that are laborers in the cities, laborers in the field, his servants on the earth. But ruling, but... We are kings and priests. We're God's servants, but we're kings and priests in the earth. Amen? Who have been given authority and have been given his power. So let's look at this next part. Building a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then I think you may see entering the cloud and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. While he was yet speaking, a bright cloud covered and then a voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And they had lifted up their heads and saw no man save Jesus alone. Amen. And that's in Luke 17. Amen. So the bright cloud represents the Holy Spirit throughout the scriptures. And as the spirit moves, the father begins to speak. Just as in Genesis 1, it says a spirit hovered over the earth, and then the Father spoke and said, let it be. In this passage we're discussing, he speaks about his beloved son, and then God the Father desires for the disciples to listen to Jesus and see him in this place of honor and glory. Our relationship with the Holy Spirit must continue to grow. Amen? Amen? As our relationship grows, Jesus is able to share things with us that he couldn't before. 
And he says here in John 16, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. So we need to keep listening, keep keep um, growing our relationship with him. As we enter in, as we enter deeper into the Holy Spirit, all veils will be removed as Jesus as Jesus is revealed in all his splendor, glory, and authority. The Holy Spirit is not weaker than the Father and the Son nor is he a servant of them. They are co-equal. They are three that are, are equal, but have different, different nuances to their role and to, and to what they are. And different jobs. Okay, they have different jobs. That's good. That's good. He is holy, wiser. I'm sorry. He is holy, wise, tender, and powerful. He is not a force that you can retain. The Holy Spirit is not a force you can retain, nor a gift that you can use, nor an influence. But Holy Spirit is a person who you can surrender to. Amen. Do you remember the, well, I forget his name in the scriptures, but he wanted to buy the power of the Holy Spirit. He wanted to buy it. Mm-hmm. And um, and Paul said, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> so we have to know that the Holy Spirit is a person that we can talk to, that we that we share time with. So the Holy Spirit, he thinks, he feels, he perceives, and communicates the glory of the Son and the heart of the Father. And and that's why sometimes it's interesting. And notice if he does this with you, that when I'm praying, sometimes Holy Spirit gives me questions to ask. And then I pray that I ask that to the Father. So it's it's like he's our helper, even to help us to pray to the Father. Amen? I think you should trust him. He has the inside scoop because he knows what the Father is thinking. Does that make sense? He's trying to coach us. He's trying to help us. Yeah. Um, there's times where, you know, I might be having a hard time or, or with strength or whatever it is, and I hear in my spirit, it's okay. It's okay. You're all right. Just keep going. It's like, okay, okay, good. Thank you. And I say, it's okay. It's okay. Just keep going. Yeah. So I want you to become more sensitive to his voice. Listen to him when he's coaching you. When he's trying to comfort you, he's telling you, it's okay. You may be worried about what somebody thinks about something or worried about getting through whatever it is. And just Holy Spirit, just say this, Holy Spirit, what do you what do you think about this? And then see what you're hearing in your spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, keep going. <laughs> Let's do our activation prayer. Keep going. Keep going. Like that. You like that? Father, our heart's desire is to know Jesus. Yes. Reveal him in his fullness to our hearts. Yes. We surrender to you, Holy Spirit, to the one who can help us. Holy Spirit, cause us to know and love Jesus the way you do. Glorify his majesty, beauty, and power of authority to our physical senses. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray right now. I feel I feel like I did when I was in Bible college. We would do these these little lessons, and then the Lord would just, He would just do shenanigans during the week. He'd be acting out, He'd be showing stuff and giving us experiences. Lord God. I pray, Lord God, not for your shenanigans. I pray for your manifestation is the way I should put it. I pray for you to take this that we've been studying, your word, and I ask you to give us demonstrations of it. I ask you to continue now to teach us, to coach us, to help, to give us, to put us in the presence of those ones that need to be in your presence. And when they're in our presence, you are there in the midst. So, Lord, we ask you to send us to those ones that need that encouraging word. 
to those ones that need to know about you, those ones that need hope, and those ones that we can pray for your peace. In Jesus' name. Lord, I'm looking forward to a fun week. I thank you. Let the games begin and prepare our hearts in you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Good job. Let your dunamis power spin up. Yes. 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 I really like the part about yes. Let, praise God. I really like the part about letting the Holy Spirit convict you. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes <laughs> let's let him do that. You know, sometimes when something you're getting ready to do something, maybe it's the Holy Spirit convict me. You know. Yeah. You know what? There are times when the Holy Spirit can be talking to us, mm -hmm. and if we don't want to hear it, you know, we can say, "Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know." Yeah, oh, I don't know what to do. He's trying to tell us. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, you, go, la, 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 la. you never do that. <laughs> so I like what you said. Don't block him out. Don't resist. Just li just listen. Like and then it talks. And then I like, just keep going. It's like, just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. That's what he's going to say to you. So, well, Lord God, we just thank you for that word today. We thank you that that goes deep into our spirit. Yes. We thank you that we use those things today, this week, as we go. Amen. And they take authority over every, un every ungodly spirit assigned to every hour of every day of this week. They cover up every hour of, the, of every day of this week in the blood of Jesus Thank you, and the power of the Holy Spirit yes. over our families and our households. I release the Arianic blessings, number 6, 24, 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face toward you and give you peace. I release the plans and purposes of God in every hour of every day this week, and may the divine doors of your destiny be opened wide before you with fruitfulness waiting at the threshold. I release angels of the Lord to excel in strength and assignment to tend and watch over you, and may additional angels of the Lord be released to every company you work for or school that you attend. I pray for wisdom and knowledge of God's plans and purpose in the midst of every challenge and trial that you face, and I seal up God's plans and purpose and divine destiny over each one of you and all your family members in the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. Have a great week and listen to see what the Holy Spirit will have you do. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. See you all next week. Amen. amen. <laughs> bring your books back when you come. And bring your books back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>